Central Park has been closed because of the threat. What's behind all these strange disappearances and sightings? Is there a possible connection or is it merely all explainable? For those that don't know, Yosemite is the second largest park in the entire country. Yosemite has always been a hotbed of excitement, drawing in millions of tourists with its jaw-dropping landscapes. But now there's an extra reason to be careful while you explore. NASA has just dropped a major announcement. Yosemite has just been shut down, and it might just change everything. Join us as we dig deeper into NASA's announcement and what it means for the future of the National Park and the Earth as a whole. Yosemite National Park, synonymous with awe-inspiring beauty, has a rich history that dates far beyond its official designation as a national park. Stretching across approximately 1,200 square miles in California's Sierra Nevada mountains, Yosemite is proof of nature's grandeur, with its iconic granite cliffs, towering waterfalls, and ancient giant sequoias, it's no wonder this park attracts around 5 million visitors from around the globe each year. Its immense popularity has made it even more shocking that NASA has shut down the park following a series of mysterious disappearances in the area. The roots of Yosemite's story begin with the Native American tribes who first inhabited the area. European settlers later discovered it during the mid-19th century, and by the 1860s, the natural beauty of Yosemite had begun to draw in tourists. Recognizing the need to preserve such a unique environment, President Abraham Lincoln signed an act in 1864 that granted Yosemite Valley and Mariposa Grove to the state of California for public use and preservation. This act set a precedent for the establishment of national parks. However, it wasn't until 1890 that Yosemite was officially designated as a national park, thanks to the tireless efforts of conservationists like John Muir. The park's international significance is immeasurable. It has become a symbol of natural beauty and conservation efforts worldwide. UNESCO recognized this by declaring Yosemite a World Heritage Site in 1984. The park's vast wilderness and biodiversity are a haven for wildlife and a natural laboratory for scientists and researchers. From geologists marveling at its iconic granite formations like Half Dome and El Capitan, to biologists studying its diverse ecosystems, Yosemite is a place of ongoing discovery and inspiration. Besides its scientific importance, Yosemite holds a special place in the hearts of outdoor enthusiasts. Its trails, ranging from easy walks to challenging hikes, offer something for everyone. The park's landmarks, such as the towering Yosemite Falls and the serene Yosemite Valley, are photographed and admired by millions. Climbers worldwide aspire to scale its cliffs, and its vast wilderness areas offer a perfect escape for those seeking tranquility and a connection with nature. The park's size, diverse landscapes, and rich history make it a destination of both national and international significance. But beneath its tranquil exterior, Yosemite hides a series of mysteries that have baffled visitors and authorities alike. These mysteries are at the heart of why an organization like NASA might intervene in the park's affairs. The reason behind NASA's involvement stems from the ongoing mysterious disappearances in Yosemite National Park, with Michael Pfizer's case being one of the most well-known. In 2005, Michael, a 51-year-old adventurer from Southern California inexplicably vanished within the park. Michael Pfizer was no stranger to the wilderness. Adopted into the Pfizer family, he quickly grew a deep connection with the great outdoors. Yosemite was like a second home to him with its rugged terrains and scenic trails. He was known for his exceptional memory, especially for hiking trails, a skill that adds an even more confusing layer to his disappearance. His last trip to Yosemite seemed like any other. On June 15, 2005, Michael embarked on a solo hike, a routine he had mastered over the years. He planned to journey from the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir to Lake Eleanor, a trek of about nine miles. He was familiar with the area, having explored it several times before. But this time, something went horribly wrong. After setting out, Michael Pfizer simply vanished. When Michael didn't return as planned, concern quickly grew. His family, familiar with his tendency to miscalculate hiking distances, initially hoped for a simple explanation. Their worry escalated into alarm, leading to a missing persons report. Yosemite National Park officials launched an immediate search operation. The search for Michael was extensive. 
Teams of experienced searchers, aided by dogs and helicopters, scoured the park. They found his backpack, water bottle, camera, and topographical map near the trail. But Michael was nowhere to be seen. His car, parked at the Hetch Hetchy parking area, added to the mystery. Despite the rigorous efforts, no further clues emerged. Michael's disappearance left everyone with numerous questions. How had he disappeared without a trace despite being a seasoned hiker? Had he met an accident of natural causes, or was there something supernatural at play? The lack of closure has been a source of continuous pain and confusion. How could a seasoned hiker so familiar with the trails vanish without a trace? Michael Pfizer's disappearance raises questions that remain unanswered to this day. He isn't the only strange disappearance that has occurred in the area. In fact, a pattern of mysterious vanishings in Yosemite National Park has made the area an even bigger mystery. A perplexing case that adds to the mystique of Yosemite National Park is the disappearance of David Paul Morrison in 1998. David, a 28-year-old chef from San Francisco, was an avid hiker passionate about Yosemite's rugged terrain. His disappearance is a narrative that intertwines the beauty of Yosemite with the inexplicable mysteries it harbors. On May 25, 1998, David explored Yosemite with his girlfriend. An experienced hiker, David was keen to conquer the challenging trails of Half Dome, a granite dome at the eastern end of Yosemite Valley. The day started like any other in the park, the sun casting its early rays over the landscape, wildlife stirring, and the air filled with the scent of pine. David had told his girlfriend about his plans for an early morning solo hike, intending to meet up with her later. He was last seen at 7.15 a.m. in Little Yosemite Valley, a waypoint en route to Half Dome. Those who saw him noted that he didn't seem equipped for overnight camping, carrying just a day pack and dressed in a sweatshirt and running shoes. As the hours passed and David failed to return, concern mounted. His girlfriend, waiting at their agreed meeting point, reported him missing. The search for David was prompt and extensive. On the first night, Teams of searchers combed the area, expecting to find him injured but nearby. By the third day, the search had escalated. Seventy-five searchers, five dog teams, and helicopters were deployed. But in a baffling twist, not only did the ground searches come up empty, but the search dogs couldn't pick up David's scent in the Half Dome or Little Yosemite Valley areas. Adding to the mystery, searchers experienced technical issues with their GPS units, reporting lost data and slow auto-locking. Despite these efforts, no trace of David was ever found. His story left behind a trail of questions and no answers. In the chronicles of Yosemite's unsolved mysteries, the disappearance of Dean Nyan in 1972 stands out as particularly baffling. Dean, a 29-year-old medical student from the UK, was on vacation at Yosemite National Park when he mysteriously vanished, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. Dean's story began on July 24, 1972, when he rented a cabin in Curry Village, a popular spot within the park. He was a bright, ambitious student from Cambridge University with a promising future ahead of him. That day, he set out to explore Yosemite, a place renowned for its stunning vistas and challenging trails. It was the last time anyone saw Dean. The most perplexing aspect of Dean's disappearance was the state in which his cabin was found. When park staff entered his cabin on July 31st, the day he was due to check out, they discovered that all of Dean's belongings were untouched. Even more strangely, the bed appeared not to have slept in. Dean seemed to have vanished when he arrived, leaving no trace behind. Chief Ranger Jack Moorhead and his team scoured every ride, concession, hiking trail, and backcountry area within the park. Despite these exhaustive efforts, no trace of Dean was ever found. Even more mysteriously, he might have disappeared near the Half Dome area, a location known for its clear and obvious trails. Dean's father, a notable figure in the diamond industry, hired a private investigator to investigate the case more deeply. The investigator interviewed Curry Village employees and park rangers and attempted to retrace Dean's possible route. But, like the official search, this private investigation turned up nothing. Decades have passed since Dean's disappearance, and the mystery continues to loom over Yosemite. Why would a young, intelligent man vanish without a trace in such a well-traversed area? 
Dean's story remains an unsolved puzzle in the vast wilderness of Yosemite National Park. B. Orvar von Lass, a Swedish national who vanished in 1954, adds another layer of mystery to the park's history. Orvar, a man of intellect and a lover of the great outdoors, had been living and studying in America, embracing the vast wilderness spaces it offered. On a seemingly ordinary day in October 1954, Orvar, his wife and her parents were enjoying the scenic beauty of Yosemite, staying at the renowned Awani Hotel. Known for his adventurous spirit, Orvar took a short hike to get a better view of the Yosemite Valley. This decision would lead to his inexplicable disappearance. Orvar left alone around 3 p.m., leaving his family behind at the hotel. He intended to climb the Royal Arches, a popular spot for its breathtaking valley views. His experience as a climber, honed in both Sweden and California, was expected to stand him in good stead. However, despite his skills and familiarity with rugged terrain, Orvar never returned from his hike. The search for Orvar was immediate and intensive. Park rangers, equipped with climbing gear, embarked on a perilous climb up the sheer granite walls of the Royal Arches in a desperate effort to locate him. Bloodhounds were also brought in, tracing Orvar's scent to the base of the cliffs. Intriguingly, the dogs could go no further at this point, repeatedly stopping and sitting down, unable to follow the trail any longer. The mystery deepened as professional mountain climbers from Berkeley joined the search, echoing the ranger's confusion about why Orvar, an experienced climber, would choose such a hazardous ascent without proper gear. Despite their exhaustive efforts, no trace of Orvar was found, leaving those involved in the search baffled and exhausted. Adding to the string of mysterious cases in Yosemite National Park is the disappearance of Walter Gordon in 1954. This incident, occurring the same year as Orvar von Lasse's vanishing, casts a further shadow over the park's serene landscape. Walter, a 26-year-old graduate student, became part of Yosemite's history under circumstances that continue to baffle experts and enthusiasts alike. In the summer of 1954, Walter worked at Yosemite as a summer clerk at Camp Curry, embracing the park's natural splendor. Known to be an avid hiker and familiar with the park's trails, Walter embarked on a solo hike along the ledge trail, a route he had informed his colleagues he'd return from by nightfall. However, as dusk turned to darkness, Walter did not return, sparking concern and initiating a search. The search for Walter was thorough and involved a significant mobilization of resources. Park rangers, volunteers, and even bloodhounds were deployed in an effort to locate him. The ledge trail, being just about two miles long, was an area well known to Walter, making his disappearance all the more perplexing. As the search continued, the bloodhounds managed to track Walter's scent along the trail, but in a puzzling twist, they stopped at the road. This sudden halt in the scent trail led to speculation that Walter might have left the park. The chief ranger, Oscar Cedron, even explored this possibility, considering whether Walter had hitchhiked out of the area. However, this theory raised more questions than answers, as Walter had left all his belongings behind and had shown no signs of planning to go. Despite the extensive search efforts, Walter Gordon was never found, and no further clues emerged. His disappearance, occurring so close in time to Orvar von Lasse's, adds to the mystique and unresolved mysteries of Yosemite National Park. What happened to Walter Gordon on that fateful hike in 1954, and why did the trail of clues come to such an abrupt end? Another disappearance that happened in the area was Joel Thomason. Joel's story is particularly noteworthy for its puzzling nature and the efforts to locate him, ending in vain. Joel Thomason, 31, from Daner, set out on a hiking expedition on September 6th, starting from the Hetch Hetchy Reservoir with the goal of reaching Lake Eleanor, a journey spanning roughly nine miles. Known for his love of the outdoors, Joel planned this hike enthusiastically, intending to be a short three-day excursion. However, the alarm was raised when he failed to return as scheduled. Yosemite National Park officials promptly released a statement and a description of Joel to aid in the search. He was last seen wearing specific gear and carrying distinctive items, including a yellow and gray backpack, a green sleeping bag, a blue and green hammock, and a red inflatable kayak. The urgency in the search for Joel was palpable, 
with the park urging anyone in the areas of Miguel Meadow, Lake Eleanor, or the trails around Hetch Hetchy Reservoir to report any sightings or information. The search operation for Joel included teams from Yosemite Search and Rescue, aided by 16 members of the National Park Service and their dogs, scoured the area. Additional support came from the entire county of Tuolumne, which contributed equipment, helicopters, and boats, intensifying the search efforts. Despite these concerted efforts, Joel Thomason remained elusive. No trace of him was found, not even a single clue that could shed light on his whereabouts. His disappearance, like many others in the national parks, poses haunting questions. What could have happened to Joel in a well-traveled area like Yosemite? How could someone vanish without leaving behind any evidence, especially in a region traversed by experienced search personnel? In 2007, Yosemite National Park witnessed the disappearance of Trina Bonaventura, an 80-year-old hiker. Despite her age, Trina was an avid and fit hiker known for her routine excursions and love for the outdoors. Trina's disappearance occurred on July 30, 2007, while she was at Vogelsang High Sierra Camp, a remote area of Yosemite accessible only by foot or horseback. The camp is a picturesque spot surrounded by granite giants and crystal-clear lakes, offering a serene escape into nature. On that fateful day, Trina, accompanied by three friends, set out to explore the well-known trails around the camp. After a few hours of hiking, Trina decided to head back to the campsite alone, concerned about food storage due to the presence of black bears in the area. This decision marked the last time her friends saw her. Upon their return to the campsite, they found no sign of Trina. Calls and searches around the camp and along the trail yielded no response or clue to her whereabouts. The subsequent search for Trina was extensive and involved over 150 search and rescue personnel, including specialists trained for high-altitude recovery. Despite using highly trained dogs, which are typically reliable in such searches, no trace of Trina was found. The search teams, perplexed, saw themselves walking in circles, unable to pick up any leads. Two weeks after her disappearance, a park ranger during a routine patrol discovered Trina's body in the Echo Creek drainage area, a rugged and vegetated location southwest of Tuolumne Meadows. This area was not easily accessible by established trails and had been thoroughly searched previously. Rangers were baffled as to how Trina ended up in such a remote and difficult-to-reach area, raising questions about the circumstances of her disappearance. Trina Bonaventura's disappearance and the subsequent discovery of her body in a previously searched area add to the mysterious incidents in Yosemite National Park. Timothy John Barnes, a 25-year-old resident of Cucamonga, California, vanished in a way that left more questions than answers, contributing to the park's aura of mystery. Timothy's journey to Yosemite began on July 5, 1988, when he set off from Tanaya Lakes near Highway 120 East to Tioga Road with a plan to hike from the Murphy Creek Trailhead to Polydome Lakes. This area, approximately three miles from Tanaya Lakes, is known for its scenic beauty and is popular among hikers. However, Timothy's hike took an unexpected turn as he never returned from his journey. The search for Timothy was launched swiftly by his friends, who reported him missing to park ranger personnel. The search and rescue operation that followed was extensive. Teams combed the area the following day, but their efforts were met with disappointment as no evidence of Timothy's whereabouts emerged. What adds to the perplexity of Timothy's case is the nature of his disappearance. The trails he was hiking on are well known and frequently traveled. The likelihood of him getting lost or wandering off unnoticed seems slim, given the popularity of the trails. Despite this, no trace of him was found, not even by the search dogs deployed in the operation. To this day, Timothy John Barnes' disappearance remains an unresolved chapter in Yosemite's history. His story is a haunting reminder of the park's unpredictable nature and the unexplained mysteries that lurk within its vast wilderness. Yosemite National Park has been the backdrop for a series of unexplained phenomena that extend beyond the usual tales of disappearing hikers. Park rangers, hikers, and locals have reported these mysterious occurrences, contributing to a growing sense of intrigue and unease surrounding the park.
One such account comes from a park ranger, Stephen, who experienced a bewildering encounter in 2011. While patrolling Yosemite Valley late at night, Stephen noticed what appeared to be a person or figure moving in a field. Upon closer inspection, the figure stood up, but to Stephen's horror, it wasn't a typical person or animal. Described as a black shadow with no discernible features, the figure began to levitate and glide towards him. Frozen in shock, Stephen watched as the figure glided about 25 feet before dissipating into thin air. This sighting left him questioning the nature of what he witnessed and whether it was a product of his imagination or something else. Further adding to the park's mystery are the reports from other visitors who encountered similar shadowy figures. An older couple described a black figure trying to peer into their camper's windows and rattle the door, yet they saw only a dark, featureless figure moving around their RV each time they looked. In a separate incident, while roasting marshmallows, a mother and her children saw a person-shaped shadow with red glowing eyes watching them from the tree line. The mother felt an overwhelming sense of dread coming from this figure. These encounters have led to various theories and speculations among the Yosemite community and its visitors. Some believe these phenomena might be manifestations of paranormal activity or entities tied to the land's ancient history. Others speculate that the combination of isolation, vast wilderness, and the play of light and shadow in the park can trigger the imagination, leading to eerie experiences that are more psychological than supernatural. Another puzzling phenomenon experienced by search teams involves technical difficulties with equipment. For instance, during the search for David Paul Morrison, GPS units reportedly lost all-star data and took unusually long to lock on, an anomaly that baffled the search team. This incident has fueled theories ranging from magnetic anomalies in the area to more outlandish speculations about extraterrestrial activity or unknown forces at play in the park. The unexplained phenomena in Yosemite National Park, from the many disappearances to mysterious figures to technological anomalies, continue to puzzle and fascinate. While some prefer logical explanations like natural environmental factors or psychological effects, others lean towards the supernatural or otherworldly. Whatever the cause, these stories and accounts continue the mystery around Yosemite, which remains a bizarre area with even more bizarre stories. Thanks for exploring with us on Beyond Discovery. If you enjoyed these revelations, click now on the next video that pops up on your screen. It's unbelievable!